Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, even though it's closed. Today's video is going to be divided into two parts and we're looking at two amplifiers using the TDA7293 amplifier chip. It's a class AB amplifier and although these use the same IC, the presentation of them is quite different. So the first one we're going to look at is fan cooled basically and we're going to have a look and see if it's any good or not. I'm not going to say one of these is better than the other and one of these I'm actually rating at 9 out of 10. But which one will it be? The first one we're going to upload today and tomorrow I shall upload the tests of the second one. Hope you find it interesting. <laughs> First of all, let's have a look at how we're going to test this. I should be using the oscilloscope and that will be purely for observation, i.e. when it's clipping or when, it, when it's doing whatever it's doing. The oscillator will be used to provide the various frequencies and the meter here, which is an analog meter, and it's calibrated in RMS volts that will be used to display the output voltage so we can calculate the power. The arrangement here is very simple. Here's the amplifier under test and it's running from this toroidal transformer connected to the mouse trap, which we can simply apply power. The input comes along here to the socket and the plug here goes into the oscillator. This amplifier is in fact two mono blocks split down the middle. So I'll only be testing one channel at a time because the power output will be totally dependent on the transformer you use. The higher the wattage rating, the lower the voltage drop will be. So the fact that we're just testing one amplifier isn't, has no reflection on the module as such. Treat it as two completely separate amplifiers with its own bridge rectifier and its own smoothing. So it is literally two mono amplifiers. The only difference between this version, if you like, and out of the box is that the fans are in fact wired in series. Now, there's a reason for this, which I'll go into um, later, but you don't need 12 volts on each fan. It just makes a lot of noise and quite a lot of draft, to be honest, and it's completely unnecessary. Bearing in mind, I should be sine wave testing this, but in music use, these fans never even get... Well, you can just feel a very slight warmth to the heatsink in operation for music but obviously sine waves draw a lot of current and uh, particularly into four ohms so I should, can, I should keep these particular tests fairly brief. The transformer I'm using is a 24 naught 24 there's two independent 24 volt windings and these particular transformers rated at 3.33 amps each now this transformer is rated at 24 volts, but it actually gives about 25.6 volts AC on the output. And, and that's largely because most of these transformers are rated at the current specified. And obviously when it's just sitting here under quiescent conditions, there is effectively a minimal load on the transformer. So the voltage is somewhat higher. And this will sag down to about 25 volts near maximum power. 
Here is our one kilohertz sine wave and we're going to turn the gain up now until we hit clipping which is about there. If we look at the meter we're on the 3 volt scale times 10 so that gives us 20 volts. 20 times 20 equals divided by 8 50 watts across 8 ohms. I've just done the same test for 4 ohms in exactly the same way and we end up with 72 and a quarter watts across 4 ohms. Um, so pretty, pretty good really. As per usual this is done in the same way that I always do maximum clean sine wave just prior to clipping. Now if you do this by the Chinese way and do it at 10% distortion you get about 80, 89 watts into 4 ohms but don't be impressed with that because it's completely unusable. The 10% distortion sounds absolutely hideous. Doing it the mic way really is the proper way clean power into 4 ohms, 72 watts. Now bearing in mind that sine wave, so I hate to say music power, but that's what we listen to, and in music power this will be up to about 80 watts. Let's have a look at the frequency response now, and we should be looking at the 0 dB scale down here, and we're doing this at about 20 watts, approximately, um, are we? No, this is about 12 watts. That's where we are at the moment, which is 1 kilohertz. And we'll look at the meter and we won't sweep it all the way down. Unless, of course, I see any or, uh, abnormalities, in which case I'll show you. So we'll go down the low end now and see where it goes. Well, there's something I need to report to you virtually straight away. The low frequency response is amazingly poor. Now, I've done a close-up of the meter here so you can see the 0 dB, and that frequency is 100 Hz, and you can see it's just, just beginning to drop slightly. So as I increase the frequency, watch the meter. Now, it's already 1 dB down, and that's at 60 Hertz. I wouldn't have expected that. And if we continue to go, that's 40 Hertz. 30 Hertz, and it's already, whoops, sorry, minus 2 dB. Well, I'm not very impressed with that. And from here down, it drops off like a brick. That's 20 hertz, and what's that? 4.5 dB down? 10 hertz, it's just 10 dB down, just drops off like a brick. Now, initially, I thought, oh, Mike, you're stupid, what's it? You're AC coupling this, but then I thought, well, even AC coupled, you, it shouldn't be as bad as that. And I've just checked the scope and everything and it's all DC coupled. The chip itself I can only put this down to. Incidentally I've measured the other channel as well and it's identical. There must be a, a coupling capacitor on there that is very low or the wrong value. I could mess with that and I'm sure this you could get a beautiful response from it because the chip itself is not responsible for the low frequency response. It's the input coupling. I'm here to report to you what you get out of the box. And out of the box, this is poor by anybody's standards. So disappointed in this because its, its potential is pretty good, I think. Let's see if the high frequencies, which should be independent of the input coupling capacitor, but we'll have a look at that now. Here we are at 20 kilohertz, and it's just flat as a pancake. As you can see, we're still on 0 dB. 
We'll take it up and have a look at how high it goes. Oh, this is going to get boring. There's just the hint that it's dropping a fraction, but that's 40 kilohertz. And I don't think even bats would complain about that or your dog. So I won't. Well, shall we go a bit higher? We'll go up to 50k. Well, it's still f near as damn it flat. One tenth of a dB down. Square wave performance isn't exceptional. There's no ringing on it, as you can see, but there's quite a bit of overshoot. This is one kilohertz, by the way. And needless to say, it doesn't get better the higher the frequency. This is our 10 kilohertz square wave. Just look at the overshoot, um, both on the upper and lower part of the square wave. Here we are at 20 kilohertz, not significantly different. Overshoots much the same, but the main thing is it's stable. And I've hung the obligatory capacitor across the output to test. Um, not quite sure where the footage of that's gone. <laughs> Sorry about that, but basically it's stable with a capacitor um, hung on the output. It doesn't make the um, it doesn't make it ring. The overshoot is much the same. Just for giggles, we'll have a look at the low frequencies. Here we are at 100 hertz, and not a terribly square square wave. Um, it's largely because of the the, the low frequency roll off. That's why you're getting such a slope on the, um, it's like you've got, well, you have got base cut effectively. Again, the bit of overshoot, which seems to be prevalent, whatever frequency you put into there. Let's explore the product out of the box. Well, what you're actually seeing here is not what you get out of the box. These are 12 volt fans and there is a socket here and there is a socket here, both of which are connected in parallel. And they receive their 12 volts from this inductor and components around there, which drop the main voltage to 12 volts to run the fans. Now, the problem with this is these fans are really quite noisy. And I would suggest that with 12 volts on each one, unless you've got this in a box or something out of way, or it's used in an environment where the sound doesn't matter, as it stands, they're unusable. So what I've done, I've taken the wires for the fan, and instead of the fans being effectively in parallel with each other, i.e. each receiving 12 volts, they're now connected in series. So theoretically, well, not theoretically, in, in reality, they're each receiving six volts. And they run approximately at half the speed that they used to. And obviously the noise drops by more than 50%. But they don't suffer from doing that. These are actually very good fans at removing heat but that leads me to a, another point these fan blades are really fragile and if you touch them while the fans are running normally what happens is you get a very sore finger um, and could even draw blood but these don't do that, they just break off there. And here is the evidence to prove it. Uh, this one is simply removed from the fan housing. But as you can see, there's a blade missing here. Um, this particular one, the, this blade broke off, but I had to break off this one opposite to keep the fan in balance. Otherwise, the vibration was quite amazing, as I'm sure you can imagine. Well, not content with doing it just once, I've also done it here as well. And again, I've had to break the opposite blade off. 
but the final straw came when I broke two off this side and one off that side. So these are the replacement fans that I've put in which are exactly the same but sadly they came with a different plug on so uh, I had to as I uh, putting these in series anyway it wasn't much of an issue. I don't think the fragility of the fans is something that should concern you particularly but obviously I look at these modules possibly somewhat differently to what you would. Um, I'm always feeling the components. If it's basically if I can't touch the heat sink it means that there's probably in excess of 60 degrees centigrade and if it's too hot for my fingers then really it's too hot for the electronics that's the way I look at it. Any electronics runs better cool. The power comes in here from the transformer 25 naught 25 it has its own bridge rectifier and these four smoothing capacitors. The main processor chip is right under the center of the fan here and it lays bottom side up so to speak you know the metal side up. Along the center here is the voltage stabilizer uh, down to 12 volts to run and parts of the electronics, the fan and other bits and pieces and right at the back conveniently out of sight it also has loudspeaker protection and a soft, well it's not a soft start but a delayed start to check for um, offset voltage or something, some sort of problem. There's a filter network of this capacitor and this resistor across the speaker which helps with stability. And this side is just literally a mirror image. Just show you a quick look at the back. There's nothing very much to show you. This is where the chip connects. And there are no active components on the rear of the board at all. But it has been tested, so that's got to be good, hasn't it? Whether that means they've been tested or whether someone stuck a label on, I'm not sure. Well, that's the end of the first part. Look again tomorrow and see the tests on the second one. Thank you for watching. Feeling good on a good day? Feeling not so good on a not very good day? Feeling very unwell? Shall I call an ambulance?